we never intended for the church to be large, but we always wanted to have large hearts for God, large hearts for worship, large hearts for the lost and for the poor. And I remember one time we went away as a leadership team and we had a little retreat at Parklands Baptist Hall and we were just crying out to God, like we were literally crying. Our team was on the ground weeping and asking God that he would give us lost people in the city. And I think God heard that, that cry and none of us had any particular training, just a whole lot of people who loved Jesus that really wanted to be able to share Jesus with others. So we started uh, on the 18th of April 1999. We had 250 people, we had 150 people in the morning, we had 100 at night. And we thought, wow, we were just a group of 20 people. We thought, where did all these people come from? That, that was the smallest number we ever had. It just kept growing from there. Little did we know when we started out how exciting the whole thing would be. We had no idea how big the plan was that God had. I grew up with a lot of um, just a lot of generic lies and, and things like that around who I can be and who I am, my self-worth and trying to figure out where I belong, where I fit. I was uh, mentored by Matthew Stevenson and a bunch of the other 24-7 youth workers at the time. I just came along to Grace a few times through that. First impressions of Grace were real like um, real inviting and real loving and there was something about their lives that was different to mine and it made me really intrigued as to you know find out what that was and ended up being God. And by drawing nearer to him it's just been a lot easier to understand just why we need him. My real purpose has come through tapping more and more into um, figuring out what his plan is for me. A, a massive reason and a massive passion in my heart that I have is to bring my family to know God. We sang very proudly, the church is the hope of the world, and we are the church. The mission we've been given here in Christchurch is to go and rescue lost people. Let's pray, let's fast, and then let's just get out and do it. And if it means expanding buildings, and if it means planting more churches, let's do whatever it takes to be able to win lost people. You know, and I always think if people can't be welcomed into the church, if they can't find hope and healing in a church, then they have got no hope, because we believe that the, the church is the hope of the world. I think the hunger spiritually in the world is for Jesus. That is what we hunger for, and that is what people's lives are searching for. They just don't know that. Seeing that passion um, come alive in people's lives to come and find out about Jesus and then bring their families and then bring families and so it's sort of it's, it's like a really amazing contagious bug that everyone gets that um, is all about Jesus. I think God has given us a love for people. I don't think it's anything that we've conjured up but I think it's a God-given thing that we, we want to see lost people saved. We want people to experience the richness that Jesus brings in our lives. The first Christchurch earthquake, we came the day after that. And it just happened to be that Dave was speaking on a rescue ship or a cruise ship. And part of his message was, you know, we're a, we're a rescue ship, so we're not here just to have fun, we're here as a rescue. It resonated with me about the vision, you know, this is what we're about, that really resonated. Everything about this church is about getting lost people saved. It's a very real church in the way people are supported and loved and you know when they're going through stuff. I love the fact that there's a real range of people that come to the church. There are people who don't know him. I guess our role is to rescue them. Church is the people of God gathering around the presence of God. The presence of Jesus really does come about when we gather together and everybody plays their part. So yeah, the church really is the hope of the world. It's the life of God being given to the world. Man, what a wild ride it's been. I think that's the, um, you know, 17 years going on 18 years. You know, man, I'd love to see 20 churches and seven, more churches in 17 years. Wouldn't it be awesome to just blow that history out of the water and see the church just advance in this next generation? I love that there's an opportunity for more and more people to be able to come as we grow more campuses mm -hmm. because that means that someone else is coming in to know and to learn about Jesus and to become Christians and to mm -hmm. find the fullness of life. At Grace, 
There's a hunger and thirst for God and the more time that we spend with Jesus and the more that we worship and the, and the more that we pray and the more that we get together in small groups and talk about Him, you can't help but want to share your faith. And we've just seen so much of that in, in the history of grace of just people, uh, ordinary folk inviting people to alphas or inviting people to churches or sharing their faith and all the rest of it and just seeing just a whole life get utterly transformed, a whole family get utterly transformed. It's the place that I got to know God and it's the place that I continue to grow with Him. From being, I guess, just this young teenager that showed up and was a bit awkward and to like falling in love with Jesus to now, I guess, even being encouraged to step out in some of my giftings and growing in leadership and things like that as well. During the earthquake, although we dropped in numbers, so much happened in terms of spreading out and getting new campuses like out in North Canterbury and things. And it's just felt like God's had his hand on those things. So it's just exciting, I guess, to see how that will continue to spread and where else he might take us. God's given us this building because as a church, we've been really faithful to him and I think our leadership has been really faithful to him. I'm super, super excited about how it will be used in the future, about all the people that God's going to bring in, about where it is in the city. I studied at CPIT, which is now Ara, and I'm really passionate about us connecting up with the students and the student life around there. It's exciting, the thought of this whole holistic type hub that can be used for God's glory. Every single week I'm meeting people who tell me how they've either met Jesus through coming to church or they've been encouraged in their faith and it kind of makes all of this so worthwhile. And the thing that I keep on kind of, the thing that keeps stirring me is that there are so many people in our city who don't yet know Jesus. We just want to provide a place for those people to come. We just love that we're able to love people and the church is fantastic at facilitating and not judging and just actually loving the people where they're at. And the more opportunity that we have with a bigger facility to minister to people, to develop them, to disciple them, it's just super exciting. You know, one of the exciting things uh, about this next season and going into this next phase in the life of our church is that everyone gets to be part of it. You know, we don't want to be a church, and I don't think we are a church, uh, where only a few get to participate. You know, we want to be a church uh, where everyone gets to play. We see the neighbour next door who's struggling with her two kids or we see, you know, the person just down the road just by themselves and we can, you know, offer hospitality and, and friendship to those people. I think that that's how God's kingdom gets expanded. It's been wonderful since we've been in Christchurch to be part of a growing church and I'd love to continue to see this growth happen throughout Canterbury so we continue to um, serve um, our local community and bring people to know Jesus. And there are thousands and tens of thousands of people that uh, Grace Vineyard is lined up to encounter over the coming years uh, and they deserve an encounter with God. They deserve to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, to experience the love of God and we believe that this whole city uh, can sit up and take notice of the name of Jesus. But when you look at the growth of the church right from, you know, 18th of April back in 1999, we had a hundred and something people. The church has grown, but in two years, maybe in three years, we're going to need Chum Street just to, just to be able to house the people who are coming into grace. But this whole Chum Street thing is not a uh, it's not a monument to Grace Vineyard. It's a place so that lots of people can come to know and to love Jesus. That, that's the bottom line. What's particularly exciting is that all the campuses can actually play a role in that. It's not about one campus having a greater priority over another campus. I feel we're completely on the same page. We challenge ourselves and our, our property group to make sure that we're always looking for the greater good. Um, and the exciting part about the future is we grow together, we learn together and we'll be challenged together. Uh, and that's got to be good for us. So we, we, we've got a team that I'd be happy to put together as a developer has been best suited for task at hand. You know, with, with the lawyer, the, the, um, the structural, the fire, the project management, the QS, you know, some property, a bit of property development ex experience. But um, if I was assembling a team, I'd choose this team because of their background, because of their experience, because of their professionalism, their understanding of the process. 
Grace has got a culture of grace. And in the three years I've been there, I've probably changed more and learned more about God than I have in my whole of my Christian walk prior to that. And that's what I've found coming to Grace, that I'm not the person that I was, because God's got hold of me and he seriously changed me. It's God's desire that nobody should perish, but everyone should come to everlasting life. And I think that's where our heart needs to be. And again, it doesn't matter what building we're working from. It's not the building that's the outreach, it's the people that need to go and outreach. So we can still go and do that. I hope that Grace will expand, that we'll see more and more campuses just around um, the whole of Canterbury. We've got to appreciate the whole of Christchurch has changed considerably now after the earthquakes. It's going to be a new city. I believe that God's going to do a new thing. And we always just had this incredible burden from the early days of people who were lost. And this city is a city of 400,000 people, 85% uh, of whom are lost. And you know, it's our responsibility in this generation to be able to reach out to those people. God's put us here as a church and as a people for such a time as this. And so our churches are like boats. You know, they're rescue boats and we can come alongside. Now, some people may not want to jump in the boat and, and we can't do anything about that. But, but the people who want to find salvation, that want to be saved, we want to bring them on board our boat and we never want to have too few boats. And we want to have bigger boats and we want to have more boats and we want to have boats that go in every direction so that every last person can be, be able to be saved. Each year, we feel that God's going to call us to take up another offering to continue to invest in the buildings you know, as long as he tells us to do that. Because once everybody's saved, we can stop, we can sit back and relax, and we can say, task accomplished. But in the meantime, we just, you know, if there are, there's people coming in, if there's people needing to be housed, if there's, there's, there's people that, that are needing to know Jesus, how can we at any stage say, well, I, hey, I've done my bit, I'm not gonna give any more. You know, the city's gonna be beautiful when it's built. You see the, the plans that they're on, you see the buildings that are going up, it's going to be the most magnificent city and we're right there in the middle and God's led us there. Why is that? Because he wants us to have spiritual significance on the inner city, on the whole city I think. See the thing is every time you plant a church more people come to know Jesus. You know you've, you've got a choice, do you just let a church grow or do you plant? Well we feel God's calling us to do both. We want to have a large central church that we can put all of our staff and we can do large events and large conferences and, and we can be a wonderful uh, blessing to the community. We want to wash the feet of the community. When you think about what God has commissioned us all to do, to go and make disciples and, and you know, build churches, um, how can th something healthy not grow? And how can you keep something so good to yourself so that, you know, sure, we could still be that 30 people that planted the church back in Thorrington, and that would be kind of cosy and kind of sweet, and we'd all grow old together. But God's plan is so much bigger than what we had or would have intended, and also His heart is for growth and for life and vibrancy. Anything that's got life is vibrant and is extending and growing. So that's, that is something to remember when people you know, talk to you about, oh yeah, but Grace is so big. But you're like, yeah, it's big, but it's vibrant, it's growing, and it's, it's got God's hand on it.